All right, we're gonna install brakes and rotors all around on this 2000 Honda S2000, otherwise known as the AP1. So my man, Phil S2K here, hit me up and it was like, yo, man, the brakes are shot. I was like, no problem. So make sure you guys go, go check out his YouTube channel, Phil S2K Vlogs. Yeah, also bought uh, these two. I don't know what it's going to be able to do because you can't turn them off anyway. Oh, the stud? Yeah. Yeah, I had to change mics. So it's only two, but I bought three. This is one on this side and one on the other side. I'm surprised at this man's tires, even though he's like stanced. It's good shape. It's called wheel alignment. <laughs> Alright, so right now we got a few tools and the parts laid out that we're going to be needing to uh, successfully change these brakes right now. So we got wherever platinum uh, pads and we got the platinum rotors as well as the back brakes. Same rotors for the back. Um, most likely I'm going to need a hammer, an impact screwdriver, uh, various sockets, you know, 12, 14, 17, some grease, um, some anti-squeal, and what's missing from right here is a G-clamp. So you need a G-clamp to compress the piston back in. Alright, got the wheel off. Um, the brake pad is really low on the front. The rotor is not too bad. But we're going to go ahead and replace the rotors um, just because we like making everything new again. Let's go to the back. You can see the back, it started getting down to the metal. That's why you got this uh, silver ring going around the rotor. So that was really making all the noise. This brake pad and rotor are completely shy. All right, now we're getting ready to disassemble the front brakes on the S2000. Um, before you start removing the brake caliper and everything like that, you want to take out these two screws right here. These screws hold the, the brake rotor to the hub. Sometimes if you take the caliper off, it might be hard to take it out because the rotor will be spinning. So this tool right here is called the impact screwdriver. Um, it shocks the screw while it turns it. If you try to use a regular screwdriver, you're not going to have any luck. So to use an impact screwdriver, you twist it in the direction you want it to loosen. So if I want it to tighten, I'll put it this direction. So if I want to loosen, I'll put it in that direction. And then you smack it with the hammer. And just like that, it comes up. Um, when you reinstall this, it's probably a good idea to put a little bit of anti-seize, not too much, so that way it's not it's not hard to take off in the future. All right, now to remove um, just the caliper portion, not the bracket. It looks like it's a 12 millimeter bolt that holds it on, so we're gonna go ahead and remove that. This is a 12. Do you remove the lower bolt you can actually swing up 
You can add one of these to your tool list, flat screwdriver or a pry bar. Lift up the caliper. So if you didn't need to replace your rotors and you was just changing brake pads, you'll just open this, swing this up, take the pads out, put the new pads, compress the piston, but we're gonna change everything. You can just slide the top off. You want to use a zip tie, a bungee cord, or like maybe a wire hanger so you can suspend the brake caliper in the air because you don't want to strain the brake hose. You could damage it. So I'm just going to hook my bungee cord up here. And I'm going to hang it to the suspension. That way there is no tension on the the brake hose so from here you're gonna need to remove the bracket there's gonna be two bolts in the back that holds the bracket on those should be 17 millimeters on the Honda S2000 Now you got the bracket off, got the two bolts out, caliper suspended. Now you see how easy the rotor came off? If your rotor doesn't come off this easy, you have these two holes here. These holes are meant to put, um, I would say a 12 millimeter bolt in both sides and you tighten it up. As you tighten it up, it's gonna push the rotor off the hub. So if your thing is seized up, that's how you get it out. So now that this is off, we're going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit. So now it's important to clean the hub surface because it could cause vibrations on the rotor. So you just want to take a wire brush like this and just remove any scale. It's probably a good idea to wear a dust mask, you know, PPE first, safety, but you know, whatever. So you just want to clean this off a little bit. Get yourself some brake clean, works magic. Now we're gonna get the, the rotor. So now it's important that you put the rotor on in the correct position because you remember those two screws you took out, they need to line up. So the rotor only goes on in one direction. So if you look, the hole is on this side and this one is on this side. So I have to turn it this way. So that way it'll go like this. And then the two holes line up. But all these brake parts come with a thin layer of grease on it. So it prevents oxidation you're going to want to remove that grease off the rotors before you install your brake pads because the grease will contaminate your brake pads. Talking about. So I'm going to use this thing to hold it.
This brake pad has this little silver tab on it. This little silver tab is called the wear indicator. So you always want to put the wear indicator in the back. But first, I'm going to put some anti-squealing compound on the backing plate of the rotor. Make sure you do not you do not put this on this side. This side is the braking surface. That side should be completely dry and grease grease free. See this brake quiet. So the next thing you want to do is um, grease these guide pins. Uh, over time they dry up and it could cause your caliper to seize. So you want to grease these up. Next step, compress the piston. So it's best to use an old brake pad like this. Place it on the piston. And then you want to open up your G-clamp. It's kind of tricky doing this with one hand, but I've been doing this for years. Now that it's like that, I right, tighten the G clamp. Oh my God, this caliper is tight. You said it's tight? Yeah, like it's old. I never had a caliper going this tight. I mean, I had a couple tight ones. I don't know what you talking about? <laughs> I don't know what you be doing with calipers, but <laughs> that's your own personal thing. <laughs> wow, this shit is like seized, my G. Yeah, it needs to go more than that. Here we go with the bullshit now. There's some fuckery. The lower pin? Calipers. Uh pressed in, lower it on there like that, get this screw, That's how you install front brakes on a 2000 S2000. What's up, YouTubers? The 2000 Honda S2000 AP1. We just went over the brakes, went from ashy to classy with the raised wheels on there. We still gotta do this one over here. 
See, that one's look like sh crap. Just got finished doing this one over here. And over here, as you can see, on this side we put a brand new caliper because the previous owner had the improper bolts on the caliper bracket which caused the caliper bracket to strip. So we went ahead and put a brand new caliper on this side. And the man S2K himself. It's too lit right now. The AP1 just got all the brakes done. Yeah. One thing though, that paint clean boy. <laughs> <laughs> 